guess we're just going outside. <laughs> All right, nobody's going to pick one. We're going to pick two off of here. Somebody pick one. Uh, number 19. Yeah, 19. 19. Good choice. I wouldn't pick it because it's only one step. But, good choice. N minus 2 over 7 equals 2 over 1. What's the common denominator? 7. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 7 over 1. 7 over 1. 7 over 1. And rewrite n minus 2 over 7 equals 2 over 1. And let's do our math. What happens to the 7s? They cancel. Cancel. And you get n minus 2 is equal to 14. And what do you do now? Uh, Add the 2. Take the 2 across the river. And n is equal to 16. And you feel good about yourself. Now, there's always somebody that's going to say, well, you just cross multiply and solve for x. Yes, you could do that. But if I did this, if I take this away and add a 3, what do you do now? you got to solve just like I told you. So you can learn two ways, or you can learn, just learn one way. I'm, I'm pragmatic. I want you to just learn one way and use it all the time. Instead of trying to use this this time and this this time, just clear the fraction by multiplying through by the common denominator. All right? So that was number, what, 19? Somebody yeah. pick another one that you think I might put on the test. 30. 30. 30. 31. Number yeah, 16. 31. That's a good one. I would probably put that one on a test because that would scare y'all. Hold on a second. I've got, I'm going to do it this way and hopefully I think that'll work. Billy. I haven't had training, so here we go. See, if you hit the racer on that picture, it'll delete the whole picture. That's why I have to put that way. But I haven't had training, so. I didn't know how, I don't know how to do that. Negative one half plus x or a, whatever, is equal to five over eight. So I'm going to multiply through by what? I heard a whimper. I heard it. I don't know what it means. What am I going to multiply through by? Eight. Eight. Thank you, one person. All of you should be saying that. Because eight is the common what? The denominator. Y'all just want to piss me off, don't you? I thought so. All right, I'm going to tase all of you. All right. So negative one half plus a over one. You can put parentheses. Or you can multiply 5 over 8. And take our red pen out. And what's 8 divided by 2? 4. 8 divided by 1 is 8. 8, 8, that cancels. So now we've got a regular pre-algebra problem. 4, that's about minus 4, sorry. Minus 4 plus 8a is equal to what? Five. Now finish it. How do you get rid of a negative four? Add it or take it across the river. 8a is equal to 9. Divide by 8. A is equal to 9 eighths. How you feel on those? Feel good? All right, let's try another. 
Let's go to the next page. Let's step it up a notch. Because my job is to try to discourage you as much as possible. So let's try. Jesus. Go ahead and take a minute if you want to take a picture of it or if you want to uh, write them down right quick. That's fine. But I'm going to ask you to pick two. And I'll ask you that in just a second. Of course, I know which one y'all gonna pick. I know one that you'll pick right off the dot. Anybody want to guess? Um, twelve. No, I thought you picked no? fifteen. Why would okay, most well. of y'all pick fifteen? Because it's longer. That's the one I would put on the test. Other than that, the rest of them are pretty much similar. I might. I would probably pick number 17. Does anybody know why I would pick number 17? If I want to take a guess at it. Or number 14. Or number 11. Why would I pick one of those three for the second one? Hmm. No, but that's a good guess. You're a loser. Anyway, next. Why would I pick number 11, number 14, number 16, I just saw that one, or number 17? Why would I pick one of those three, four, for the second type problem? What do they have in common? Somebody needs to turn their volume down. Keep getting feedback. What was that? Sorry, that was my phone. Oh my gosh. I need to go into cardiac arrest. Get out of my classroom. <laughs> Y'all had any teachers go crazy over your phones? Yeah. What'd you say? At this campus? Yeah. Teachers go crazy. I, I, I know. Sociology? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's my science teacher. He's yeah. a He's so mean. Are you I tell you, I couldn't be. You know, today at Tri-County, with the way these teachers are now, there's no way I could be a student. I was a student at Tri-County, but there's no way I would, I would be so, especially with that class. I would say, okay, I'll come back when you, when you get to the 21st century. That's what I would say. But no, don't say nothing like that. All right, let's do. Why would I? I'm gonna show you what those four have in common. What do they have in common? All four of those have a what in front of the parentheses? A negative. Does that change things? Yes. A positive, it don't matter. But a negative changes things. So let's do number 15. And then I'll pick one of those. I'll let y'all pick one of those. 10P plus 9 minus 11 minus 1P is equal to negative 2 times 2P plus 4. Two P plus four minus three times sorry minus three times two P minus two. Okay, if you haven't started working on it yet, go ahead. Now, there's two things that's going to get you on this test. What are they? Anybody want to take a guess? Well, I told you it's going to be a lot of equations. So, what's going to get you? Really three things, but two things mostly. Sorry. Okay, nobody's going to communicate with you. Okay, thank you. Did he actually leave? Who? He got home. Who did? His books are still there, Ippy Pendleton. What? His books are still there. He didn't leave, did he? 
No, he didn't. He um, fucked out real quick. Yeah, he, yeah. Oh my gosh, he's actually following directions. Wow. <laughs> Unlike the people that text in Crazy. class and doesn't walk out, you know, and text in the hallway, they still text in class and act like I don't see them. Okay, so what's going to get you on these? Time and signs. Time and signs. Make sure you get these things down to a few seconds. Shouldn't take you no more than a minute to do these problems. So before I do anything, is there anything I can do on this side? Combine like terms. I can do that first. So I'm going to take my handy dandy highlighter. And 10p minus 1p is 9p. And then I'm going to take my handy dandy green highlighter. And I have $9. I owe $11. What's the outcome? of having nine dollars and owing eleven dollars. You still owe two dollars, thank you. Appreciate that communication. And on this side we use the what law? Distributive. Distributive law. Thanks for the whispers. Whispers are bit better than nothing. I'll take them. I just can't take mumbling, okay? I can take whispers, but I can't take mumbling. So that's going to be negative 4p minus what? 8 minus 6p plus what? 6. And what do we always do after we distribute? Combine like terms. Thank you. I know you're not supposed to talk, but you know, if you don't. If you don't want to get beaten up, you don't have to talk, okay? I don't want anybody up there at Pendleton to beat you up, but I appreciate it. So here we go. We got 4P and we've got 6P. So I'm going to rewrite 9P minus 2 is equal to you owe $4, you owe $6, you what? You owe $10. Take my handy dandy green highlighter. Things I do for y'all. And you owe eight dollars, you have six dollars. You owe two dollars, Hubert. Thank you, class. Which one's the little bucket? Nine. Negative ten P. So I take it across the river. And I get nineteen P. What do I do with negative two? Take it across the river. And I get zero, P is equal to zero. All right, somebody pick one between 11, 14, 16, and 17. Which one would you think I'd put on the test? That's not rhetorical. I'm asking y'all to communicate with me. Uh, 17. Good job. Because I would pick 16 or 17 because they're more complicated. Yes. Good job. So, y'all go ahead and write 17 down, and we'll do it as soon as I delete this one. Okay, 10 times x plus 3 minus 1 times 9, negative 9x minus 4 is equal to x minus 5 plus 3. 
and I have no idea what time it is, so I'll just wait a minute or two and let y'all work on it. If you can work, if you can do these problems that I'm giving you today, then you, you're pretty much good for 6.2. I think this is 6.2. I usually don't buy candy bars, but you know how you go to a convenience store and they'll have something like two for one dollar or something? Well, yeah. when I was a kid, or when I was growing up, not a kid because I didn't have Twix back then, but I think as a teenager, or they had cookies and cream, and I absolutely, absolutely love cookies and cream. So, when I was at the store a while ago, get me something to snack on. I saw these, and I picked them up, and I was like, oh, my gosh. I know what I'm talking about. Twix used to be like four or five inches long. They used to be like this long. This looks like those little things you get in your stocking. You know, the little single little, I mean, these things ain't two inches long. I said, no wonder they're two for a dollar. Or buy one, get one free. Look at that. I remember when I was, they were like this long. But what they do is they gradually shrink, they gradually shrink it. That was Obama, right? The same thing, I don't know, it's probably the Russians. Uh, no, you don't blame, you don't blame Obama for anything. Uh, you shrink the, the Cokes, you, you notice that your Subway and your, uh, your, your McDonald's and the watch at large, it'll shrink. It'll shrink and shrink. And eventually, the large will be the medium. And they'll still ask you, they'll still ask you to pay the same price. I couldn't believe that. And all right, am I exaggerating? You don't have to say nothing, you don't have to communicate. The hell with y'all. <laughs> I'm just talking my damn self. All right. Let me guess. Y'all don't eat food. Okay. Nope. DNX plus 30 plus 9X plus 4 is equal to X. You owe $5. You have three dollars. You still what? Two dollars. Still owe two dollars. What is ten plus nine? Nineteen x. What's thirty plus four? Thirty-four. And there's your small bucket. Take it across the river. Eighteen x. Take the 34 across the river. And X is equal to negative what? 36 over 8. Which is? 2. Two. Two. Oh, yeah. 2 times 18 is 36. Yeah. All right, so that's the second type problems. Third, let's go to our handy dandy third worksheet. Oops. 
I'll give you a second to write them down or write one column, take a picture, do whatever. Of course, you can see this on the video for the one person that watches the video and pause the video. But anyway, I know that's only one person. Oh, I got a meeting right after this class, and I really don't want to do it. What time does class get at? 12.15 or 12.20? Or 12.15. Sorry, what? 1.15. One, what? One, 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 Y'all not lying to me. Okay. Which one do you think I'd pick? Mm. Yeah, 18. It's got a negative in it. It's got plenty of fractions in it. You're right. 18 is a good one. What other one would I pick? 22. Yep. Good job. I'd pick either 22 or 21, one of those two, if I was going to pick. So let's do 18 and 21. Well, I'd like to throw 21 on there pretty much to confuse you and discourage you and eventually hopefully you quit. So here we go. I don't forget which one. 18. 7 fourths P, no coughing in class, plus 1 plus 2 fifths is equal to 7 halves. All right, need you to go through and multiply by the common denominator. Clear the fractions. Or like I said, you could just sit there and stare at it and eventually quit. Well, Hubert, I don't know the common denominator. Well, good. We'll just go over here and we'll do 2, 4, and 5. Now, I got 3 and a half degrees. And I've got most of my teeth in my mouth, and, you know, I'm educated. So I do know the, the common denominator of 2, 5, and 4. But the reason I'm doing this over here is to remind you that any time you can't find the least common denominator, you can use what we used back in Unit 1, the greatest common divisor or whatever it's called, the least common multiple, and you can find it. 2, 1, 2, 5. 2, 1, 1, 5. And 5, 1, 1. <coughs> so what is the common denominator? 20. 20. Good job. So I'm going to erase this. So I'm going to multiply through by 20 over 1. And I'm going to put the baby step in there because I do know that someone has never seen this before, like I told you the first day we did it. So I'm making sure you put the baby step in there so you don't screw it up. So, 20 over 1, 20 over 1, 20 over 1, 20 over 1. Take my black marker, multiply by negative 7 over 4p plus 1 over 1, plus 2 over 5 equals 7 over 2. And what happens to the 4 and the 20? Goes to 5, Hubert. Thank you, class. 20 over 1 is 20. What happens to the 5 and the 20? Goes to 4, That's Hubert. Five. That's right, class. And what happens to the 2 and 20? Becomes 10. Thank you. It only took three or four cues to get you to do it, but thank you anyway. All right, so 5 times negative 7, negative 35p, plus 20. What's 4 times 2? 8. Eight. And 20 times, or sorry, 10 times 7. Let me do that on the calculator. 70. 70. You have $20, you have $8, you have $28. Take the 35 across the river. 
And while you're at it, take the 70 across the river. And 28 minus 70 is negative what? 42. Thank you. Negative 42 is equal to 35p. Divide by 35. Divide by 35 and you're done. Now a lot of people say, well Hubert, I didn't take my 35, 35p over. Well, when we get to 6.5, and I, of course, we go into that after this, which I'll go into Friday. We're going to be dealing with inequalities. And if you don't keep that P positive, you've got to do extra work. But you probably already knew that because you invented it. So that's why I always keep the variable what? Positive. If you keep the variable positive, you don't have to worry about extra rules and inequalities. That was number what? 18? 18. All right, y'all do number 21. I'll write it down in just a minute. Number 21. Number 21 says negative 1 fourth n minus n is equal to negative 5 6. I'll give y'all about a minute to work on that. What's the common denominator? Be careful of four and six. Well, let's go over here and do it. Because I guarantee you, some of y'all did 24. Well, that's just extra work, but you knew that because you invented it. All right, so four and six. Two, two, three, two, one, three, three, one, one. What's the common denominator? 12. 12. Good job. Well, I get the same answer. Well, that's fine. But if I'm using very big numbers, if I use a 44 and a 66 on the bottom, you're not going to multiply 44 times 66. If you do, that's just ignorant. Okay? Because you're using two big numbers and you're just multiplying them together. You're not going to be able to work the problem because the numbers are too big, and you're going to have to rely on what? The calculator. So that's why, I, you know, there's a reason I do everything in math. Okay? When I teach, there's a reason I do everything. And one of the reasons I, I teach the, the least common multiple, or whatever it is, I always forget it, is so you can find the lowest common denominator. And the lowest common denominator here is 12, not 24. So 12 over 1, 12 over 1, 12 over 1. <coughs> 1 fourth n minus n over 1 
equals negative 5 over 6. And 4 will go into 12 three times. That's just going to be 12 in. And 6 will go into 12 two times. 3, negative 3 in. Minus what? 12 in. 12 in is equal to 10. Negative 15 in is equal to 10. Take this across the river. Take this across the river. We got 10 is equal to 15 in. Be a negative 10. And divide by 15. Divide by 15. And n is equal to negative 2 over 3. Question. All right, the last set of problems. And this is out of 6, whatever 6 point, whatever section is, uh, is solving equations. Oops, my bad. There we go. Write those four down. I'm going to let you write those four down because I could put all four of those on the test. <coughs> I'd probably pick number 13 and number 16. Why would I pick 13 and 16? Got a lot of negatives. Yeah, you're right. Thank you. So we're going to do number 13 and number 16. Whenever you get through right, go ahead and start on those two. Those little ones that come in your stock in there about that, 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 that long time. Rip off. So what am I going to multiply number 13 by? A hundred. Good job. I'm going to multiply 13 by 100 and also number, yeah, number 16 by 100. Go ahead and get to it.
Y'all check my math to make sure I moved everything accordingly. What was that? It was my son. Oh, Lord, I thought somebody done got hurt. Somebody's called the SS right quick. I'm going to turn Miss Callahan in. The SS. <laughs> Their dad's in there with them, so they shouldn't be getting hurt. <laughs> That's all right. Mine goes to DSS every other day, so. <laughs> <laughs> Word. All right. So, y'all haven't said anything, so I guess I've done it correctly. I need to combine some like terms on the first one because that 190 minus 239, so negative 50x minus 369 is equal to 100x minus 429. Somebody check me. Yeah, it's 429. I'm going to bring the small bucket, bring it across the river. Bring that 429 across the river. And that's going to give me 150x is equal to, well, I can just subtract them and it's going to be a positive because the 429 is positive. So that's going to give me a 0 and a 6. Somebody help me out. It's 6. Okay, thank you, one person out of... 20. Appreciate the communication. I'm going to show you a trick of learning the war. And three, we'll go in there. Two fifths. Somebody check me out. Two fifths is equal to four tenths. The point four is equal to x. Now, why did I, why did I put it back in point four? Why didn't I leave it as two fifths? Why did I do that? Because what did the question start with? What did the question start with? It's real simple. Decimal. So what do you end with? Decimal. Decimals. All right, now this one, you're going to have to think a little bit. First of all, what's 10% of 210? 21, Hubert. And what's 3 times 21? 63. So that'd be negative 63B plus, you got to think here, 2 times 210 is 420. So you got that down. 10% we said was 21. So 4, 40% would be 84. So I got 294, so, I mean not 294, 420 plus 94, did I say 94 a while ago? I uh, said 221 is 84. I said 84, didn't I? Yeah, 84. So 84 plus 420 is 304. Somebody help me out. Or I just got it mixed up in my head. That was fine. 4 be 504. What's 2 what's 210 times 2.4? I forgot it mixed up in my head. Is it 504? Y'all got it? So it is 504? Okay. I was doing it in my head and I got a little bit blurry. Okay? Okay, 170. What's 10% of 170? 17, Hubert. That's right. And 2 times 170 is what? 340 plus 17 is 347. Check me. So money multiply 170 times 2.1. What do you get? That's supposed to be a negative right here. 357. Okay, I got it off by 10. I suck. So that's, what'd you say, 357? Yeah. Thank you. 
and then minus, well, 170, 1 times 170 is 170, and then 17 times 3 is 51, 51 plus 170 is 220, 221, thank you. So 221B is equal to 705. And I guarantee you there's somebody in the room that has no idea what I just did. And y'all all graduated high school. And that is sad. Okay? It's not your fault. Everybody in here should know how to take 10% of 210. If you can take 10% of 210, that's 21. This is 30%. That's 3 times 21. Y'all should be able to do that. But I'm not going to get into that because that's, 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 I don't want to talk about that. That will get me mad. So we're not going to talk about it. So use your calculator if you have to. All right? <laughs> no sneezing in class. All right, negative 63B. No coughing either. Negative 504 plus 357. Well, the answer is going to be negative. It's like my bank account. It's always negative. It's always more than positive. That's my bank account. I hear you. Okay? So what's 504 minus, what's minus 304 plus 357? 504 plus 357. Somebody give it to me right quick. 147. I'm sorry, what? 147. Okay, 147 is equal to 221B My equals 705. That's not an equals, that's a minus symbol, sorry. Okay. Now, what is negative 63? That's going to be negative 284. Yes, sir. So, negative 284 B minus 147, that's a B, Hubert, not a 6, is equal to 705. And I'm going to bring that 284 B over. 284 B is equal to negative. 852. What is negative 147 plus a negative 705? <coughs> Somebody has to check me. Somebody. I know you don't want to communicate with me, but at least check me. It's 852. It should be your answer. Somebody check and make sure I didn't make a mistake. I need somebody to confirm it. Yeah, it's 852. Thank you. Appreciate the one person. Thank you. person I'm supposed to meet. I'm going to sign contracts. I hate doing that. All right. So that takes care of that. And y'all feel good now? Yes, sir. I guarantee you there's some people in here that didn't know how to do this. And it's all because either you didn't listen or the teacher sucked or a little bit of both. One of, the, one of the three. We all know y'all paid attention in high school, right? Nope. Did? All right, well, I'm going to take roll today. It's one of those days that I think I need to take roll. So let me hit the record button. I do it periodically just to keep people.